Hey, what's up everyone? This is your boy Jay and I am back with another video for you guys today. And as you guys can see too, I'm in my tank top, you know, so <laughs> when it comes to me just flexing my muscles too, I'm not trying to, you know, um, gross you out or trying to, you know, be kind of like showing off, but um, I just want to do another reaction video to, you know, a really interesting video that I really watched too from Vice also when it comes to Tantra Island also. And I believe this is based off a series too when it comes to, you know, with Vice too. So when it comes to that, especially when it comes to Tantra Island, I never heard of this place too, but I can say, but you know, from what I can just, when I saw this documentary too, I watched it, you know, I think at least twice. So when it comes to, you know, this video and re this reaction video, and especially when it comes to this, you know, um episode also it's just like you know when it comes to tantra because i've been to you know certain workshops and classes before too it's a really beautiful you know i say practice to really just learn about yourself too and it really has a lot of aspects when it comes to just with sexuality but it's more than just sexuality too it's all about you know how you can really just you know to really learn more about yourself too and really just you know create powerful and healthy relationships too in so many ways not just with other people but with life also so when it comes to that too and i know some people who are part of this you know um this documentary too i'm not going to mention her name but you know you probably will figure it out by the react this reaction video too so whether you are whether you know your time that you're watching this too or any kind of platform also this might go to, you know my exclusive platforms also it's just like when it comes to just you know you know how if you guys feel about tantra it's totally up to you guys too and especially when it comes to this episode too when it comes to tantra island i believe you know the you know producer of it too i think her name is tier dandy so shout out to her shout out to vice and shout out to anyone who's really involved in this episode too because i know you know i think one person who's in this too and she's a very awesome human being. She has some awesome workshops, you know, when it comes to with her clients and all that too. She really provides an awesome space too when it comes for people to be themselves also. So I'm just going to give that disclaimer out there if you guys, you know, want to disagree about, you know, how I feel about when it comes to my friend, you're more than welcome to do so. But, you know, as long as you're not oh, harassing. So when it comes to that too, you guys... Feel free to share your feelings and thoughts about, you know, my, this reaction video, especially when it comes to this reaction video to this episode, when it comes to, you know, it's Hantra Island too. So whether you want to share your disagreements or your agreements to what you felt from this reaction video, you're more than welcome to share your um, comments too, even just as long as you're not harassing anyone or just, you know, putting people down too. That's, you know, that's pretty much what I care about too. But you guys can really just share your feelings a lot about it too. Or, you know, by saying that also, I might just contradict myself. So anyways, you know, shout out to Vice, shout out to Tia Dondry too, when it comes to this, you know, episode too, when it comes to, and especially from Vice also too, it's a really cool, I mean, interesting channel. I don't watch many of their, you know, videos too, but with this one, it kind of, you know, brought my attention too. And we're going to, you know, again too, and <laughs> we're going to, you know, stop at key points just to really talk about things too. And you guys are more than welcome to agree or disagree to what I have to say, too. So without further ado, if you guys got any favorite drinks and all that, too, I got my mushroom elixir up in here. So when it comes to this, you know, let's get this party started and let's go. All right. So let's see. I'll put it on the big screen. So, oh, by the way, too, this island looks really beautiful. I'm not going to cap. I mean... If I see this island when I'm going on vacation, I mean, I'll be all in this motherfucker. So <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, say that too. This is a beautiful island too, but I'm just saying that too because I never, you know, travel outside the U.S. So that's just me saying it. You guys can disagree all you want to. If you guys want to share any kind of destinations that you went to in your vacation, feel free to do so. So anyways, let's get this party started. Here we go. Oh shit. Here in Korpangan, there's huge Korpangan. aspect of liberation. Oh. People who really just want to break all cultural codes and boundaries. The energy here is so strong. 
anything that you need for your healing is going to show up immediately. And some people, that it breaks them. Can you bring out the sexual energy? This is not a regulated industry. And that's when I stop there too, because, you know, um, just like, you know, with me as a yoga teacher too, and it's just like when it comes to that also, and this is just my own opinions, but you guys can really disagree or agree to what I'm just about to say. But when it comes to, you know, when it comes to the code of conduct, I really just believe that there should be something in place for practices like this when it comes to Tantra, and especially when it comes to, you know, these kind of practices, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, like to go on trips and like to just really go on their journey to just really learn more about themselves to really heal in their own way too. But when it comes to just, you know, with the code of conduct, it's really good for you know anyone who's interested in this kind of um, work too, or especially, you know, when it comes to, you know, with the code of conduct too. So it's kind of like, you know, hold, uh, holding people accountable if someone steps out of line or abuses their power too, especially if they're a man or if they're a woman too, also, so when it comes to that as well. That's just my own opinion about it too, because, you know, even like with me as a yoga instructor too, it's just like I will definitely will don't want to just cross anyone's boundaries, especially if I have students in the future, or just like, you know, in general also when it comes to <clears throat> with anyone. So that's just me saying this too, and just uh, as well just when it comes to the code of conduct, and just really believe that, you know, people who are want to just do this, you know, professionally should just really have like, you know, a code of conduct in place, and especially, you know, as a license too, when it comes to this work too, or certification. There's probably is, but I don't probably don't know. But if you guys want to share any kind of resources too, if there's a certification or license when it comes to practicing Tantra, you know, especially in certain areas in the world too, feel free to share in the comment section below. So Anyways, let's get back to it. There's no code of conduct. Someone can just take to the workshop and now, oh, they are a massage no, therapist. Oh. 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 It is up to the practitioner to keep the boundaries. What frustrates me is this idea that a man thinks that his cock can heal a woman. Oh. No one can look through this. Maybe I'm dealing with that man now. The boxes are beginning to open whether you like it or not. Hmm. Off the coast of Thailand, there's a place that locals have dubbed Tantra Island. Within this community, expats from all around the world have claimed to have created a tantric utopia. I've seen that a lot of the practitioners are saying that they can heal all kinds of trauma. In my personal life, I have just come out of a relationship that was quite traumatic. I've been dealing with it in my- Hold on for just a second. I'm gonna try to adjust the volume here, so. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. So, anyways, let's get back to it. Way, but I'm kind of at a stage where I would like to try something a bit more radical. I'm going to go to Koh Yang and enroll myself to whatever the tantric practitioners oh, tell it. me to do. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello. 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 Novelty buckets and cheap vodka and fingering. If you go outside and didn't have to be there on the full moon, but I got the experience of something else. Mountains. Oh. The full moon parties here evoke either heaven or the darkest circle of hell, depending on who you're mm. talking to. You guys can get that. Select on the biggest. I just want to pause there too. It's just like when it comes to anyone who wants to travel to this place too, especially, you know, outside the US too, it's just really being careful because, you know, like there's a lot of stories nowadays too with when it comes to traveling. You know, and it's just like, I'm not trying to scare you guys whatsoever. I'm just want to keep you guys informed. And especially when it comes to, you know, expecting to, expecting anyone who's involved in this episode, and especially when it comes to Vice and Tier Dondry and my friend also who's part of this, you know, episode too, just when it comes to, you know, when it comes to traveling, especially when it comes to traveling, you know, outside the U.S. for a vacation or for business or for both. Just really being careful of that too, because you know you never know what you might experience. So, but just when it comes to that, just really being careful. Just always keep yourself safe, secure. You know, keeping yourself healthy and all that too. And that's like basically what my, you know, dad taught me too, and especially with my mom too, because you know they traveled before. You know, yeah, you know, in the U.S. and you know my dad had been to outside the U.S. But I, now I'm just 
saying that in this when it comes to um, explaining a little bit of my little family history, and that's all I'm going to share to trying to keep my family privacy, you know, down to a minimum. Um, oh, saying that out loud, <laughs> down to a min, uh, bleh, minimum. So when it comes to that too, so yeah, you know, just really traveling safely out there too, especially when it comes to events like this, you know, going to Tantra Island or Jamaica for hedonism too. I might talk about that too in the future. So when it comes to this video, but anyways, I'm gonna stop flapping my gums. You know, I'm gonna get back into this reaction video too. too really. The over on the other side of the island is a little bit different. There's a community who claim to have unlocked the sexual healing power of Tantra. I've definitely been going down that rabbit hole of my own sexual exploration. <laughs> I keep pausing these um, uh, with this reaction video because, you know, I, like I said earlier too, I experience, you know, when it comes to, you know, any kind of Tantra kind of classes. And I think it was workshops too. If, you know, uh, feel free to correct me if someone actually knows, you know, knows me personally. But when it comes to that, I think it's more than just, you know, sexuality with Tantra. That's just my own uh, feelings about it too, just when it comes to that. And I believe, you know, Tantra can really help you learn more about yourself too, especially how you can really just, you know, create, you know, you know, create that kind of, you know, healthy relationships with life when it comes to every aspect of our lives too, with other people, with, you know, our environment also. So that's just me saying it too, you guys could disagree. So let's roll the video. In relationship as a way of exploring with other people and learning who other people. I had a lot of sexual numbness inside of me. Some people call me with all kinds of uh, issues. They come in a way traumatized. So I've just arrived on the island and I'm extremely excited to be here. It seems very, very hippie. There's a lot of Shout out to tear down and yoga awesome. going on on the beach. Okay. I'm going to be as open as I can possibly be to exploring whether Tantra really works because at the moment for me, it really is a grey area. I'm feeling like a bit mm. weirdo on the sidelines right now, but maybe by the end of the week, you'll see me right at the centre of the drum circle. <laughs> <laughs> or will you? <laughs> hey, I don't blame you. So drum circles are cool too if you guys ever experience going to those kind of, you know, um, I say events, but also if you guys got a group of friends, you guys want to hang out. Just, you know, enjoy each other's company. And, you know, it doesn't have to be sexual, per se. It's just really just, you know, a group of people who just really, you know, love to hang out, have fun. I say have fun, too. That's part of it. But also just to really, you know, connect with each other as a community, too. And just really, you know, you know, just really build those healthy relationships, too. But I understand if, you know, that's kind of like new to everyone, too. To anyone who hasn't experienced that before, so I understand where Tear is coming from with that. So, you know, shout out to Tear, you know, Tear Dandy, and to Vice, and to anyone who's part of this episode too. A big shout out to you guys, especially to my personal friends who who I am going to respect their privacy when it comes to that. So, anyways, let's do this. There's a tight knit community of expats who form the tantric scene on the island. I'm Almost like the village elders, they each teach conscious sexuality in their own ways and will be my guides for the week. So I am a somatic psychotherapist. A sex love relationship coach. An intimacy coach. And a healer. Yeah. Like, that's just who I am. Hey, oh, that's, that's my homie right there. Shout out to her. I know her personally, so definitely. She's awesome and she's very down to earth and very understanding too. So shout out to her. That's my friend right there. That's my only. Nine years, ten years. Mm -hmm. And you're all friends and there's a big community. Yeah, I mean, some of us are more acquaintances, for mm -hmm. sure. Some of us, we just met and then us two are like... <laughs> you guys together or...? <laughs> so, it depends on your definition of together. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, this looks amazing. Just some gratitude to the food. Okay. Hey, that food looks good. I'm not gonna lie. That food looks pretty damn good. <laughs> Excuse my damn language. It really looks good. I'm not gonna fret because I'm a foodie too. So, hey, I mean, some vegan food is really some really good shit. You know, metaphorically saying that, of course. You know, because hey, I love to drink my mushroom elixir. So why the hell not? So when it comes to that, I mean, that food looks pretty bomb. I'm not gonna lie. See, Hong Kong is cooked right too. I'm just saying that too, but. 
you guys could disagree with what I'm saying too. So, anyways, I'm stopping a lot in certain places, and you know, let's get to it. Us, this experience, this moment. One thing out of many, many things that Chandra can do is turn something that's mundane into extraordinary. Mm -hmm. ah. Yoga teacher or Tantra teacher, they have their own definition of what Tantra is. I like to classify them as classical Tantra, which is for spiritual evolution and enlightenment, and Neo Tantra, which is for healing and uh, working with your sexuality. I think you'll like tomorrow's measure session. I go through all kinds of different touches to like oh. awaken their body and find out what they like. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's quite obvious that they all have their different approaches to Tantra. I still don't quite understand what Tantra means, but I'm definitely going to learn this week. My first day in Tantric paradise. I presume I'll be eased in gently. Damn, oh shit. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Holy shit. My friend is going in. Okay. Hey, shout out to my friend too. She's really awesome. So when it comes to, you know, with her too, I'm not gonna mention her name. You probably will figure it out though too in this reaction video. But I wanna respect her privacy and when it comes to what she does too. When this reaction video too. Big shout out to her also. So when it comes to this video, but hey, I didn't know it was gonna go like this. Shit. <laughs> Let me take a sip of this real quick. So, oh man, now my mushroom elixir is blowing up mist. So, hey, cheers to all you guys too. Cheers to anyone who's watching this, for those who are part of the original video that I'm reacting to also, and especially to all my fans and subscribers too. So, anyways, oh shit, here you go. Damn. Today, we're going to do different touches to see what she likes, what she doesn't like. She's going to wake Oh, her. okay. She's a dominatrix. And then hey, more part to you guys. Invite sure. her into asking for what she wants. It requires more. <laughs> it requires what I need to do more. The session involves stimulating different parts of the body with a number of unusual household items. It doesn't matter where you are. You can always find something to play with. Exactly. Best place is the hardware store. <laughs> oh shit! Oh damn! That's wild as shit. Sessions with people a long time ago, so I was called into it as a, a way of healing myself. Literally, about 19, 20 years ago, this flashing green neon sign that basically just tantra, tantra, tantra. I'm like, where was that? In my head. Oh. And I found the right teacher. I went through a teacher training. All of a sudden, I was like healing, and I was supporting others to heal. Almost like a sex therapist without the license. See, I just want to stop there too. And this is no shade against my friend who's in the middle of there too, and especially to you know, Tier on the right and this awesome person too on the left. They're all gorgeous women too in their own right. The same is respectfully. So <laughs> I don't want no one coming at me with the smoke. But when it comes to, you know, I was saying earlier, when it comes to, um, just like when it comes to like with the certification and with the license, I believe that there should be something in place, especially when it comes to a code of conduct. So basically, like, you know, if someone, you know, crosses the line, abuses, abuses their power, whether they're a man or a woman, too, there should be, you know, some accountability there, too, when it comes to that. And especially, you know, for, you know, anyone who wants to do this as a career, just to really have something in place in mind so they can really just be safe. You know, without having to be worried about, you know, getting in trouble whatsoever, too. But, you know, again, this is no shade against my friend, you know, in the middle. And to these two lovely women, too, I'm next to her, too. So I'm going to get back to it. The session is definitely not what you would expect from your run-of-the-mill therapist. <laughs> but I have a feeling nothing on the island is. There is healing in pleasure. If we can find out what we want and need in this segment of our life, it makes it so much easier in life to be able to ask for what we need and want in a daily basis. Next up, I have an appointment with Jaden. 
Let me explain. Hilary Kimball runs the Jade Temple, an all-women's tantra space on the island. From what I've gleaned, a lot of tantra... Oh, nice set up there. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. That is a nice story. I'm sorry. Play that again. An all-women's tantra space on the island. From what I've gleaned... That is a cool setup. I'm not gonna front. That is a really cool setup too, especially when it comes to that, you know, the floor and everything too. Just the design of it too. That's really cool. I'm just gonna say that. So, <laughs> anyways, I'm gonna shut the hell up now. This is gonna be a distraction video. Oh, there we go. A lot of tantric healing centers around the yoni, the ancient Sanskrit word for vagina. Yoni massages are meant to clear trauma from the area through what looks to me like spiritual fingering. There's also another way to achieve this. And it's kind of like a kinder surprise for your vagina, where the small fruit toilet is a profound spiritual hmm. These are the eggs, right? These are the eggs that you open up your egg. Not exactly. <laughs> the way that we do this is that we're all in a big circle. They have no underwear on, so we actually do bring the egg in inside of the class all together, massaging the womb, massaging the vulva. And then actually asking the yoni and asking the body, do you want to receive the egg today? And how do you know whether it's saying no or yes? The yoni will literally begin to draw the egg in all on its own. In yoni yoga practice, we actually learn to bring the egg all the way up towards the cervix and push it down oh, towards the entrance. Sick. This is super, super healthy for a woman's body and a woman's mm. vagina. If you don't use the muscles here, you're gonna lose them. So it gives you a tight vagina. You don't want a tight pussy. You don't want a tight pussy. This is a complete misconception. A tight pussy is actually really unhealthy and can lead to health complications. I never heard of that. If you guys want to comment about that too, respectfully, of course, also, you feel free to do so. So, yeah, I can't answer that too because I'm not a woman, obviously, but any women who is watching this, especially for those who are, you know, practice or Tantra practitioners or who are involved in that kind of lifestyle too. You know, when it comes to the Yoni eggs and all that too, you're more welcome to comment to what she's saying too. I'm gonna to laugh her name too, but she's, you know, obviously gorgeous, you know, as a man seeing this too respectfully, you know, what she's, you know, talking about. I'm just gonna really just take it at face value too, just when it comes to me reacting to it. So anyways, let's get back to it. Do you sell the Jada? Okay. $60. So Damn. you can choose your egg. Uh, that's a little Thank bit you. Yeah. I will probably use it. <laughs> Hello? Do you know what? I think it is important for women to know their yonis. Do I think it's important to put it up my vagina in front of loads of people? Probably not. In order to stay on what looks to me like an endless holiday, each practitioner has to have a tantric niche to avoid the issue of competition. I have been invited to attend something which I can only presume didn't have this issue. An Egyptian tantric sex magic witch coven. Whoa, that's All a lot of titles. Is a white dress. Never heard of that before. Uh, hello, how are you? Good. My tantra is going back to the ancient lineage, Egyptian tantra. Huh. My workshops that I perform for people is all about connecting into that portal of their magic. Do you cast spells? Of course we do. Sex magic is using sex, which is your life force. We come from sex. We come from this energy, this purity. Uh, oh man, I stopped at a particular point <laughs> too. But when it comes to what she's saying, she has quite of a point there when it comes to what... <clears throat> oh man, that's unattractive, I'm so sorry. When it comes to, you know, um, just, you know, with sexual energy, because we all uh, have that in our own ways too. And just like, you know, when it comes to us as a human species, especially, you know, in every life form in general too, it, you know, when it comes to, you know, sex, we are created from sex too, because, you know, when it comes to, you know, with birth, you know, how women give birth to, you know, kids too, and other, you know, beings also, I'm just saying that respectfully, of course, too. So she has a point there too, but when it comes to, you know, with energy, because I'm a, you know, energy healer also, just when it comes to whether you love to practice 
Tantra, if you like to practice Reiki also, or just like any kind of, you know, energy healing too. It could really just be powerful, you know, in so many ways too. So yeah, I'll give her credit where credit's due. So shout out to her. She's, you know, she has some cool tattoos too when it comes to that. Her hair is pretty awesome with the wavy and all that. But, you know, she's got a vape too. So, hey, I'm not going to judge. So I'm just going to let this video play. Should I wait to yeah. 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 This magic was performed way back in the ancient Egypt. We work with these energies, these ancient energies, to align to your magic, to who you are. It's anything is possible. I am a witch. What does that mean? A witch is somebody that knows the craft. So could I be a witch? You could be a witch. You probably are maybe a witch. Yeah. Do you manifest? your will. Yeah, I think so. I think you do. When I was in my teens, mm. I was heavily involved with witchcraft and it wasn't until I got to Egypt that I found um, my calling. I take spiritual tours now, initiate men and women in these temples like I have in many past lives before. The witchcraft that you're talking about is ancient Egypt, right? And then Tantra is Indian. Mm -hmm. How do the two mix? Yes. That's a good question. And there is Egyptian Tantra. It's not mainstream like India is. Um, but it is um, of sacred, sacred lineage. Thank you for guarding this place. That's a good question from Tier. Yeah, I just want to say, <laughs> I keep pausing. <laughs> I just want to say this too. It's just like, you know, whether you know someone identifies themselves as a witch or you know a healer too just really you know question everything too even like you guys when it comes to me too because when it comes to energy healing and with yoga and with tantra or anything that's related to you know spirituality and wellness just really question everything do your own research and just really you know trusting your own intuitive uh, senses when it comes to you know get, getting into when it comes to these practices and modalities and tools and all that stuff too. I'm just really saying this authentically as an energy healer and as a yoga, uh, as a yoga instructor too. <laughs> so when it comes to that, um, yeah, definitely. Just question everything, even for what I share too on my channel and my social media platforms too. So question everything, you know, just when it comes to that and just really trust in your own intuition, your instincts also, Which, especially when it comes to your own intuitive nature, your intuitive, uh, intuitive senses and all that too. And just really, you know, doing that your own way too. So anyways, and yeah, this is no shade to anyone also who's involved in this video. I'm just really, you know, sharing and pausing at certain points too. So let's see. Did you farewell? This one. Oh, what is that? The devil? <laughs> of course, of course. You'll go through a spiritual upgrade. You know, because I use tarot cards too, and man, this <laughs> shit, this really hits home for me too. So it's kind of like in a tarot deck too, because, you know, whether you guys like to use tarot cards or oracle cards too, it's just like, you know, when it comes to tarot, and this is just my own knowledge of saying this too, I am, you guys can feel free to correct me and share your own feelings and thoughts about tarot too. It's just like a really specific kind of, you know, um, system where it's kind of like, you know, when it comes to certain messages too, like when it comes to like the devil or the, you know, the tower card or the sun or the moon, or just like, you know, um, the queen of swords too, or the magician. And just like when it comes to that too, because these, you know, tarot cards can be very specific when it comes to, you know, you know, when it comes to, and with these cards, you know, whether kind of deck that you get too, and especially when it comes to that too, because most decks come in certain forms too, especially how people, you know, um, create these decks too, especially when it comes to the classic, you know, ways to of tarot. So when it comes to that, and just really when it comes to that too, especially for anyone who wants to get involved in that too, just really wants to get a tarot deck for themselves too, or just like an oracle deck also, just really, you know, um, just really, you know, um, really picking decks that really, you know, uh, feels right to you too. Just really trusting your own intuition and not, don't let anyone 
just really influence you to just really get in the deck that you know they want you to get for yourself just really trusting your own intuitive nature just really you know when it comes to picking your own deck when it comes to your oracle deck or your tarot deck too because when it comes to tarot it can be very specific but with oracle decks too especially when it comes to i'll just show you an example too hold on so when it comes to you know like an oracle deck too as you see in this you know too so it's kind of like you know just really choosing a deck that really feels right for you too and just like these tools can help you to really connect help you to understand your intuitive senses too when it comes to that also your intuitive nature whether you're a man or a woman who's watching this too so i haven't excuse me for me i have no shame just really expressing how i like to use these cards to say you know like like a healing affirmation message for today or just like a spiritual message for today or you guys have, like for anyone has a specific question that they want to answer to themselves or especially if they're using this deck to you know if they're doing this professionally with a client you know whether they have a youtube channel or if they're doing off of youtube too and social media platforms just really you know trusting your own intuition when it comes to you know just picking a deck too that really feels right for you whether it be an oracle deck or a tarot deck too and just really go along with it too and just really connect with people who kind of feel the same way too so in your own way so i know that's a lot but i just want to share that with you guys too so if you guys like this deck too i mean feel free to you know um i might post a link to it in the description below if you guys want to check out this deck for yourself too it's called the art of attention healing cards too so it's really cool got really cool affirmation cards too especially for anyone who loves yoga tantra all that beautiful stuff too so hey Cool stuff here. Shout out to the people who are involved in this video too. Especially from Vice and Tier Dondi. And everyone's involved too. So, oh shit. I gotta put my deck back. So, oh man. I'm gonna let this video play. I keep stopping at certain points. Because <laughs> it relates to what I do on a regular basis. Over the next two years, when you will be going through awakening, from this, Kopangang is a very highly spiritual place. We're on such a high portal frequency here because of the land. We're on crystal beds. Whatever we're learning Ooh, spiritually, it's intensified. What, oh. what spiritual awakenings lie ahead for me? And will being tied up for five hours in a Japanese shibari rope bondage session help me get there? Who here has no experience oh, shit. with ropes at all? Wish me luck. We're not going to be going too erotic today. Let them breathe. Oh, damn. The oh, shit. The genitals to their feet. Can you bring out the sexual energy? Are you feeling your genitals? With everything getting a bit raunchy, I decided <laughs> to buy a new sexy That's skin wild. from Heather. It's clearly the hot new move. Oh. Yes. Water, hmm. fire. This rope based foreplay moved into a game of Oh shit. Fire is that is got some wicked tattoos. It could be everything. So, what is the element of fire inside of you? <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying being in control, but not so much when I was on the receiving end. Do we want to reach our edge? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh shit. What the hell? What the heck? Yo, that is wild shit. It's long and mason. It's hot and sweaty. It's got marks all around. Yo, that's wild as shit. You meet those wounds, you meet those pains, and let them fucking go. The body is very uncomfortable and reaching many different levels of uncomfort and that begins to open up the mind. I'm definitely uncomfortable and looking for an exit. But out of the mist, a rope angel suddenly envelops me in calming notes. So what do you want to kind of get out of this? I had some See, that's what I like about her too. I think her name was Lena. Let me see what her name was before I go. Yeah, Lena Boom. Yeah, I, I, my memory's good. So shout out to Lena. She, because when it comes to asking consent too, that's really important when it comes to 
just when it comes to touch too because if you don't ask for consent you're in a whole lot of deep shit just really saying that on the wheel so when it comes to that too especially for anyone who wants to just say you know and involved in these practices also professionally too just really asking for consent just really doing that from a healthy place if they say no i mean you got to really honor that decision especially when it comes to if you're a man who's asking a woman like hey can i you know asking for consent just really you know tightest rope or just when it comes to adjusting someone to in a yoga class always ask for consent no matter what too because if you don't you're going to be in a whole lot of deep shit. just really keep it about here so when it comes to that too, I just want to share that too. So shout out to Lena too. She's really awesome. She really asked for consent. You know, asking her for consent if she wants to do that too. So when it comes to that. So what do you want to kind of get out of this? I had some trauma recently with my partner. And since then, I found it really hard to surrender and be sexual. So that's why like a workshop like this for me is harder. How did you feel throughout being like wrapped up and you know tied up? I felt fine because you were doing it so gently, mm. but it did just feel a bit weird because I felt a bit mm. like a hog roast. A hog roast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to If put I had it. the apple, I would be channeling my inner pig hog roast. Oh, yeah. she got jokes. <laughs> Shout out to Lena. She's actually gorgeous too. So yeah, respectfully saying that, of course, just really doing it. So that's you know, big shout out to Lena. Okay, yeah, some shares. How are you? I felt mm. loving and caring, which was mm. nice because I haven't had that in a while. Mm. There were parts of the rope that hurt, and there were parts of the rope that would have been scary if it was a man. Probably, I would have felt a lot more intimidated. Mm. But I had a very gentle soul wrap me up and it actually felt quite nice and comforting why because she was fit <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm starting to get the idea of what tantra is living in the moment even at dinner time manifesting my will having a strong yoni knowing how to verbalize my sacred sexuality oh, and being connected to the fire air and water of my being but there's also a young generation of visitors who are carving out their own tantric interpretations and practices. Hi, how are you? Roxy works across the globe giving tantric massages, primarily for a client list of rich men. Yeah, oh, what the hell? Lovely to meet you. Where are you from, Yannick? I'm from Germany. What is the profile of your main clients? So most of them um, are, are a bit different from Yannick. They're a lot older and it's feeling like they've really been in the material world. They've grabbed at a lot of things. And it's that feeling that still there's somehow a void that's missing. And that's a lot of the time why people tap into spirituality. Hmm. So we're gonna be doing a practice today called the Circle of Light. And that's basically tapping into the subtle energetic body. So the breath is the anchor into the present moment and giving and receiving until the giving and receiving actually drop away and there's this feeling of oneness. So we don't need the heavy foreplay or the touching so much, but this sharing of presence. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the hell? I can understand her look on her face. Uh, you know, tears, so we can do it again. Ten minutes later. Oh shit. Damn. That's all I can say. Yeah, I understand what tears reaction to because if I saw that too, I'd be like, oh shit. Like, you know, but if I was just seeing that for the first time, I mean I understand where how she feels. Just seeing that, you know, just being the observer of it, it's like, oh shit, because I've been in that situation before too. But that's just another story for another day. I might just share that too, party on my birthday, you know, when it comes to the wildest stories I've been to also. And I've been in this situation, but it was at a certain party per se, so, or a sex party per se, but that's another story for another day. So, anyways, let's get back to it. Mm -hmm. 
good. Is it good? How was that for you? It was really good. <laughs> It looks good. <laughs> it's very different from any kind of yeah, normal cuddling or love making. Mm. Yeah, it's a very different state of consciousness and what describes it well. Do you guys not want to have sex now? Having sex isn't always necessary. Do you agree with that? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There were definitely times where, yes, I felt like I want to um, have sex with Roxy, but um, it's not focused on my genitals or on having an orgasm right now um, in that sense, but much more on the whole body experience. Yannick and I are going to shower because basically we want to clean our auric field. Hmm. I mean, I understand what Tears' reaction to it, but when it comes to what I was saying too about the code of conduct, there should be something in place there too for you know who wants to be you know involved in this kind of you know practices too. But not just me saying this too, so you guys could you know totally you know share your feelings and thoughts if you think differently too, respectfully too, of course, also. So <clears throat> I keep throwing clear my damn throat. Shit. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know this video is going to be age restricted too, which is, you know, fine with me because I keep killing my throat. I'll be cussing a lot and all that shit. So, when it comes to that too. But, anyways, excuse me. Let's get back into the video. Mm. It's not over, folks. The session was followed by a full body massage designed to stimulate the linen, also known as penis. When I do tantric massage, I always start at base of the bodies and so when you can relax certain parts of your feet the lingam will actually get aroused so before we go to lingam we focus on entire body what i'm seeing does seem undeniably sexual but i'm learning that within tantra intimacy has been radically redefined just hmm. because i touch someone it doesn't mean that it's sexual oh wait that's wait we go back to what she said yeah, she's right about that. I mean, shout out to her. I mean, she's gorgeous too in her own way also, but when it comes to that too, because when it comes to touch, it doesn't have to be sexual. It could be just, you know, you know, like a friendly hug. There's nothing wrong with that too, as long as people are comfortable just receiving hugs too, just asking, you know, I say asking for consent if they don't want to hug. You got to really respect that kind of ba uh, boundaries too, whether they're a man who's receiving a hug or a woman too, and vice versa also. So. Yeah, she's right about that. You know, shout out to her. This is no disrespect to her or to Inc. or the guy who was involved. It's kind of like, you know, I say, <laughs> I don't know who he is, but shout out to him too. So um, I was going to say Tony Stark, but I don't want to put any comic book references to, but now that I just said that, I probably did. So when it comes to this video too, and <laughs> it's like, you know, doing that. Also, she's right about that from what she says to, you know, you touch someone doesn't mean it's sexual. So you're just totally right about that. And shout out to her too. I keep, I don't know her name, but she's really awesome. She's cool. She's gorgeous too. So when it comes to that, so, you know, let's get to you. Like sexual, but it really comes from mechanism of society of feeling so much with touch translates into sex and it doesn't. However, I see how the blurring of these boundaries could give rise to misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. That's true. That is definitely true. That's kind of like, you know, it's good to really just debunk these misunderstandings so we can all have that kind of clear understanding of it too when it comes to touch and consent too. And just really, you know, with that also, it's just really, you know, Tira is right about what she said there too. So yeah, definitely. Do your clients ever come to you and get the wrong idea? A huge part of it is the fact that I will never have sex with any of them. Is Yannick just a client? Yannick, I consider a friend <laughs> more than anything else. Yannick, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel very good <laughs> about the statements. <laughs> How's a lot of people have friends? <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about with the code of conduct. It really should be something in place. So it's kind of like, you know, situations like this could get ugly real quick. So when it comes to that, you know, this is no disrespect to anyone who's involved in this video, but I just really wanted to debunk this too. So it's kind of like that too. It's just like, you know, these kind of situations get messy real quick because, you know, 
I mean, I've been in this situ. I mean, in kind of sort of situation before too. I always do my best to respect other people's boundaries too when it comes to consent and touch. Because I don't want to get canceled because of misunderstanding. I'll be heartbreaking. I can't even like do make a living just when it comes to doing the things I love to do and I'm being falsely accused of something that I haven't done too. And from especially from misunderstanding too. So yeah, but like this too, I mean, this could get, you know, messy real quick. I'll just leave it at that. So anyways, let's continue to play. Oh man, it's gonna be a long ass reaction video. But they are also aware of the dangers of the often ambiguous lines of consent in the world. What are the borders? Like, okay, no penetration, but between no penetration and working sexuality, that's like one million possibilities. Could slip up, could get horny, <laughs> could get something that uh, you didn't sign up for, and then the grey zone comes in, and um, who is to blame? Mm. The grey zone of consent within this tantric world has been weaponized by abusers in the past. Yeah. In 2019, Agama, the world's biggest tantric yoga school, was forced to close its headquarters on the island after accusations of endemic sex. See, I am totally against abuse like this too, especially from people who have, you know, particular power when it comes to someone has a yoga school or, you know, something like this too. And it's just like, you know, this, you know, I was talking about when it comes to a code of conduct, there should be something. In, I don't know if there is when it comes to Tantra. I know there's in yoga too. I don't know if they're, you know, colliding together too when it comes to the code of conduct. So, I know if you guys, you want to share any kind of resources about that too, if there's a code of conduct for Tantra too, you're more than welcome to do so because I don't really know too, but hopefully there is because when it comes to, you know, with this too, just really, you know, for those who abuse their power like that, to express your towards their uh, students should be really held accountable for that, whether they're a man or if they're a woman too. So when it comes to that, too, I'm totally against this kind of abuse too from leaders who are supposed to help people too and uh, let people, you know, heal and just grow in their own way too without having to, you know, overstep your boundaries and doing some malicious shit. I'll just leave that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just continuing to play it too. So abuse by its leader, Swami Vivekananda Sarawasti. You do Tantra and you go crazy. You know that if you maintain yourself in that pre-orgasmic state for a long time, it's like a drunkenness. I've managed to get hold of Mangala, who's a previous Agama student. For me, it was a very long, slow process. It was years before I was groomed enough to be abused, let's put it that way. Mangala spent five years at Agama and became the victim of tantric sexual abuse That's on an right. industrial scale. Yeah, You'd be invited into a private session with him and do some kind of orientation. Women would then report that they ended up sleeping with him. This was alongside allegations of toxic misogyny at the core of its belief system. Let's get clear, this is a cult and people are brainwashed. So, as I was, I was deep in it for five years. And so uh, we would hear constantly, oh, there's, there's problems with women. I was constantly being told, I've got sexual blocks, I'm a Scorpio, I should be having five lovers, and it was this constant chipping away at my confidence, and to the point where I would ask for help from... Yeah, I kind of, you know, I'm sorry that she has to go through that too, when it comes to, you know, that, you know, um, school too, when it comes to that gamma, um, I never heard this thing until now. Because, you know, I experienced something, too, in the past. I'm not going to mention her name because, you know, she's, you know, I went to, uh, I say it was a little bit of a workshop, but it's kind of like, it was weird. So you had to do some weird breath. Uh, I say certain kind of breath work. You had to go really, really fast, too. And it's kind of like I had to really just force my own breath just to go a certain way. Because as a yoga teacher, too, I like to encourage people to just really allow the breath to just flow naturally without having to force it. So when it comes to that, just, you know, someone to just really, you know, telling you you should breathe this way, just forcing it, forcing it. And it's just like, this is no shade against someone I was talking to, but I just want to give my experience from it too. Just like when it comes to that. And, you know, I think I probably shared this too in the video a while back about, you know, when it comes to, you know, the um, self-righteous narcissist. I know that's kind of like a, you know, a crazy title, but I just really shared my story about how I, a former friend of mine too, kind of, you know, Kind of, you know, you know, um, disrespecting the way too, just because, you know, I, she thought I was in my own head, but I was just really, you know, 
in my own heart space to just really express myself to meet her for the first time because we knew each other for a long time. And then like she told me not to go to her, you know, workshops too, because I was really interested in just, you know, see what's all about, just really learn more about myself. And it was kind of heartbreaking to do that. But, you know, but, you know, I'm over it too when it comes to, you know, that situation that happened with me too. And, you know, it's just no shade against the person I was talking to right now. So um, hopefully she's, you know, not, you know, abusing their power too when it comes to her workshops also. And, you know, hopefully she's doing well too. This is no shade against her because I'm over it too. I did some healing for myself, got over it, you know, just moved on, you know, lesson learned and, and hey, I'm still my Herculean self. So, hey, you know, I'm continuing to be me no matter what. And I want to encourage people to be their own selves also. Especially when it comes to the things, practices I'm sharing with you guys too. When it comes to just, you know, with yoga and with energy healing and so on and so forth. So, but, you know, with her too, I'm, it just sucks that, you know, she had to go through that. When it comes to that abuse from that teacher, my heart goes out to her. Hopefully she's doing okay too, wherever she's at in the world also. And yeah, so... Definitely prayers to her, especially towards her family too, you know, and to anyone who's, you know, been abused, you know, by that, you know, person also who's been displayed too. So my heart goes out to you guys too, you know, just praying for you guys as well. So I'll get back into it. Um, senior teachers, um, the only answer was like, go and say it this morning. Despite the leader playing the island, amidst worldwide media attention, the school has quietly reopened. There's a yeah. lot of people have been through that school who are out teaching, like on the island, they've got massive blind spots and are still basically regurgitating the same shit. The Adama scandal may be in the past, but this kind of abuse has not left the island. And there's That's a lot crazy, of yeah. and a lot of sea tags on this island ha yeah. has been and will be. This is a really big issue mm -hmm. and something that you guys probably come across regularly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have like a Facebook women's group and once a week, maybe someone's like, I had to see, I wow. feel like I see them quite often. Well, recently there's a lot. Let's see what's here. I can see a post and it says, a man sexually assaulted me, but someone recently told me his hair and teaching things, in brackets, tantra, shibari, that would put him in a position of power over women. I worry that with what he teaches, that many women might end up in a vulnerable position with him. A lot of women have had similar experiences with this guy. It was not okay what he requested in the name of spiritual yeah. healing. Yeah, so there's another point. Cool. This guy offered her a healing session. What this consisted of is him tapping her forehead and eventually going down to her vagina. Mm -hmm. And he told her that he cleared vaginal chakras by putting his fingers inside of them. There's honestly comment after comment after comment. I would have thought that the Agama scandal would have been something that changed the island for the better. But I'm sad to see that the same shit is still happening. I know. It's just, you know, that kind of abuse is unacceptable. And I'm saying this too as an energy healer, as a yoga instructor too. I mean, I do not condone that shit. That is totally unacceptable for, you know, people who abuse their power like that, especially towards other people too particularly with women too because it's like when i hear those stories it's just heartbreaking to listen to that and it's like damn you know it's like you know like you know it makes me to learn more about how i can really just you know be a better person especially not crossing someone's boundaries when i'm you know hosting a yoga class or a workshop too in the future also and yeah like it's just like hopefully one day too it's just like there's a code of conduct in place so people you know who abuse their power will be held accountable for their actions too so <sighs> motherfucker mm -hmm. i gotta take a sip for a minute like this mm. shout out to tear she's really awesome she really does do wonderful in this episode shout out to her so cheers <laughs> So much of the teaching involves being touched by strangers and it involves doing things that make you feel uncomfortable. Some men have figured this out and I think they've taken advantage of it. Mm -hmm. If you're a sexual predator, this is like a paradise for you. Fuck that. 
I mean, this is just me saying this too. I mean, no predator should, you know, I'm hoping I don't get censured from the saying this, but hopefully no one who abuses their power like that go to these kind of places where they just have a free will to just do that. I mean, that's just, not, that's a no-no for me. It's just like people who do that should be held accountable and for their actions too and be punished accordingly. So, I don't know. That's just me saying this too, so I'm going to get back into the video. I'm going to get out of this, you know, funky place too. After the Adama scandal and the constant abuse being reported on the island, some teachers have started to train people in consent and verbalizing their boundaries. Hello. Hi. Looking at our boundaries all of the time constantly helps us to define and refine what those are for us so that we are continuously true to ourselves. In Satyama's classes, tantric yoga was paired with role plays based around consent. No matter what I ask her, she's going to say no. no. Yeah? Can I give you a yoni massage? Absolutely not. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're going to say yes and... I choke you. Yeah, I'm trying not to hit this part. I had a rope here yesterday. Uh, the class descended into chaos. Jeez, they're having an the MMA wrestling match? Holy shit. And nipple clenching. <laughs> what the hell? They were horseback riding and all that? What the heck? So how long have you guys been together? That's well. Wow. More than five years. Oh, yeah. Nearly yeah. five and a half years. Five and a half. Um, and do you often explore different things together? We do. Yeah. And also with other people because we're in an open relationship. So we've been open for two and a half, and a half years. years. I was 20 years old. I was very jealous at the time. I worked on myself and I realized I'm also interested in other guys. And I worked on my jealousy. You get jealous because of the feelings you, you have in your past. Mm. Not be confident. That's nothing with your partner. So it's not you easy. Have an issue. It's always you can say it's you. No, it's you. It's mm. you. The class ended with a very intense game of power play. Ask him energetically for a hug. Some uncomfortably prolonged hugs. And this guy still at it with the bum out eye contact. Yeah. Oh, I think they just want to activate them. Mm -hmm. They both have been staring into each other's eyes for about five minutes, and they both just. Teaching boundaries is a good way of helping people protect themselves. But to be able to have the courage to vocalise your boundaries in the first place, you need to have a strong sense of self-worth and sexual confidence. Ah, I'm just breathing into that. Marnie's all-female workshops are designed to destroy internalised misogyny and shame, cool. all from patriarchy. Yeah, that's powerful. My body more or less looked like this at 11, 12 years old. So I had a split energetically with men where I weaponized my body and my sensuality to get love and approval and with women diminishing and hiding myself to stay in connection. 10, 11 years ago, I got in touch with the shadow work, the hidden, the denied, the suppressed aspects of self. And I decided to become a stripper and a lap dance. It's a moving meditation that we will move into. Ah. Also working through a lot with my mum sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shout out to my mama. Okay. Looking good. Respectfully seeing it, of course. Holy shit, what the hell? Okay, respectfully seeing this. I'm gonna calm myself down. Hmm. This is your time and just drop into meditation. For some reason I feel so safe with women. We've been trained to give our bodies away, you know, to the sexual experience, to the power in male sensuality. And I feel like when women mm. have a feeling of like awkwardness or like divorce from being able to occupy that space, it's almost because we're so used to giving that away. I literally could feel like sensations in my body where it was like almost disgust, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt in there because like that was not accepted in our culture in Thailand. Shout out to the women who do these practices too, where they can just really, you know, honor their body. I mean, bother, 
honor themselves in a way that they're not giving their power away to you know other men and in general too when it comes to society's expectations so you know shout out to the people who do these kind of practices especially to the women who are involved in this practice too more power to you guys i'm just going to say this too you know and this is not me just you know capping or just being a simp i am no simp whatsoever because you know i don't let anyone pump me i don't no one talk shit or belittle me too if you guys do you're just gonna get blocked you know simply straightforward too so i don't really play that shit but when it comes to um with you know these practices especially for women to really just you know empower themselves you know i was gonna give you guys a salute so Big shout out to the ladies who do this, whether they're black, if you're from Thailand, if you're white too. Big shout out to you guys too. Cheers. And this is from a man saying this too, who loves women. So, anyways. Doing that, it feels terrifying. But at the same time, I felt like I am touching my body. I am feeling, you know, this beauty that I have to show. You know, I don't have to be disgusted by it. Marnie is clearly teaching a class that's really special for those who attend. Very sexy woman. You should see her left hand. Amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, shout out to you guys. Women bring to express themselves and tactically evolve. But what about the men on the island? Women are empowering themselves. We men must do the same. Steffo is training the male population here on how to be a true tantric man. I want to teach men about integrity and how important it is to actually integrate your sex with your heart and the head. Yeah, that's powerful. Shout out to the men who do this also, especially when it comes to what I, you know, experienced too and when it comes to the tantra, you know, events that I went to also, I really learned how I can really just connect with my, not only just with my heart, I mean, with my head, but when it comes to my heart, when it comes to my, you know, my own sexual energy too, just when it comes to that, I mean, it's really powerful. Just, you know, I don't have to really just think about if I see a beautiful woman that I see, I don't have to just really, oh, I'm, I'm having a heart on or something, you know, it's just like, you know, just really, you know, um, just really, you know, um, I don't know how to really break this down too, just when it comes to, um, just, you know, how I can really just connect with my heart too and, you know, the head too, as well too when it comes to my own sexual energy and when it comes to um, just with, you know, how I, you know, interact with women too. It's just really, you know, honoring their space, honoring their boundaries, appreciating them for who they are, not just with the physical, but with their emotional, you know, um, heart also and with their mental, you know, mind also. So yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it's basically what I'm trying to say is just Tantra really helps me to just really, you know, um, just really, you know, be a better person too in my own way also when it comes to learning about myself in many aspects too when it comes to relationships with life also. And, you know, shout out to my friend too who's, you know, if she's watching this too, in much love to her also. No shade against anyone who's involved in this video too. So I'm just going to make that disclaimer again too, <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Shout out to, you know, the men who are doing these powerful practices too, especially when it comes to, you know, to societal norms too of how men should be too, when it comes to, you know, don't cry, you know, when it, especially how it relates to women also. It's just like nowadays too, it's really good to just really, you know, respect other people too, especially when it comes to the opposite sex and really how people uh, identify themselves too when it comes to that as well. So anyways, I could get going on and on about this too and I'll be tongue tied and just going in circles because my mind wants to say something too, but sometimes my mouth will get kind of, um, you know, all over the place too. So that's kind of like with my Asperger's syndrome, it's like, ah, shit, I know what to say. like. It's hard to come out of it too, so I really have to really slow down and just really get my words across smoothly. So, anyways, I'm gonna get back into it. Okay. And we won't step over boundaries. Or we can get back into like it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> One thing that I'm teaching on Tantra is uh, semen retention. Oh, I'm gonna say this too when it comes to semen retention, because I heard about this too in certain spaces, especially on YouTube and social media platforms. 
And it's just like, you know, when it comes to semen retention too, and this is just me saying this too, when it comes to educational and entertainment purposes only. And it's just like, you know, it's really good to just really have to find that middle ground when it comes to semen retention and masturbation. Because sometimes we need to just, you know, if you feel like we have too much energy stored up inside certain places, we need to just really release that too in a very conscious and healthy way too. And so when it comes to masturbation, it's really, I think that's healthy too. But if you just really exceed that also, if you're just, you know, masturbating to certain kind of content on a regular basis and just really draining your own energy, it's really good to be mindful of that. And also when it comes to with semen retention, it's good to just really, you know, if you just want to just really, you know, fill in your own cup up when it comes to your own energy too, that's really good. But at some point, we just got to really release that also when it comes to, you know, with our own energy. It's kind of like, you know, um, like an oil change, you know, we need to just, you know, change it out and just really clean it too. When it comes to that, you know, clearing those tunnels, like um, basically too. So that's just me saying this too. So. You guys could totally disagree if you guys feel differently about it too. And I'm gonna get back get to it. Right, and it's on this video. The yeah. life force of a man is stored in the semen. Wow. Wow. Orgasm does not equal ejaculation. I don't know about that, man. But hey. after 21 days is when our superpowers start to. I don't know about superpowers because we all have, you know, unique. Kind of abilities when it comes to human beings you know when it comes to our minds our bodies our hearts our emotions too and it's just like you know we, we all have this too when it comes to men i'm not speaking for all men too it may sound like it too but i'm just saying this you know generally because it's you know scientifically proven it's just like we all have this kind of you know energy within us too as men when it comes to just um with our own you know, creative energy, because, you know, creative energy and sexual energy is just, you know, um, two sides of the same coin, so it's but, um, worded, worded, if, ooh, worded differently. So <laughs> when it comes to that, that was really tongue twister just saying that out loud, but when it comes to that, I mean, it's just, you know, like, you know, how we really just connect with our own cre creative, uh, creative energy to just really, you know, doing that in our own way too, without having to deplete it too. So whether you need to just, you know, you need to do some semen retention for a couple of days and you need to just, you know, relieve yourself too, just to really, you know, clear those tunnels. Just really listen to your body per se too, when it comes to your own creative energy and just really question everything what people say too, especially to what this guy's talking about too. And this is no shade against him too, but he really made some points too when it comes to, you know, with men being vulnerable in this space too, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to play this video too. I'm going in circles again. Come out. We can use that in a long-term relationship because ejaculation pushes the partner away. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, well, I mean, I don't want to put my business out there, but I can say this too, just seeing this, you know, from an educational and entertainment purposes only. From an educational perspective, it's just like, you know, when you feel that kind of like release, I really do feel like I want to be closer to that someone too. But that's just me saying this too. I know it could be totally different for other men too, especially for, you know, you know, people, men who practice this, you know, Tantra also. But if you guys want to comment about what I'm saying too, respectfully too, you know, feel free to do so too. So definitely, definitely. Then with chronic blue balls, not <laughs> yeah, chronic blue. Balls. Yo, yo. <laughs> Let me take a sip of this shit. I <laughs> mean, yo, that's funny. I mean, shit, that's a good point. But I mean, sometimes maybe it's not. I you know, you don't want to assume, but that's a really good point here. Oh man, <laughs> that look at her face. That is priceless. Shout out to T. <laughs> God damn. Oh man, you can, sometimes you gotta laugh at yourself too when it comes to that. I was like, when I read that shit, I was like, yo, <laughs> that's a good point. I'm the same as too, man, but. Oh shit. Oh man. Mm. Shout out to Tear. I mean, I'm secure as a man. I can laugh at myself and, 
you know, sometimes, you know, you experience having blue balls. I mean, I experience it too because I'm a man, but sometimes I find healthy ways to do that privately. So I don't have to gross people out and all that shit too. So, but now it's just saying that too, I'm putting my own business out there. So shit, I'm being accountable with my own actions right now too. So. Being able to come worries me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but the promise of superpowers must be genuinely tempting for the men in this group. So in a couple of sentences, introduce your brother to the group. Oh. As a child, he actually struggled quite a bit from learning disability. I, you know, I don't want to make this a race thing, but I don't see one brother in this video. <laughs> so, shit, if you see me in, you know, any kind of, you know, activity Sunday too, I mean, no shade against all these guys too who are participating, but I don't see any shade of brothers in here too, especially black men per se too. I could be wrong about this. I mean, hey. And so, um, <laughs> shit, because sometimes when I go to a workshop, too, I could be, like, the only brother there, too, or well, one of them, too. There's also a beautiful sister there, too, that's there, but, man, man, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it at there, too. I'm not, I don't want to make it a race thing, too, but I just want to point it out there, too, just, you know, respectfully, so. One of his biggest challenges has been oh, man. facing uh, how his father expressed what masculinity was to him. The doctors really couldn't do anything about his trauma, and he's overcome that by discovering yoga and various alternative methods to get into his trauma. Just release everything you know, every program you pick up about what it is to be a man. You know, shout out to the men who are involved in this practice too. I understand like when it comes to societal norms, when it comes to men too, because we get a lot of pressure too, we get a lot of shit. I know there's some bad you know, crazy ass bad apples out there when it comes to men. But, you know, for men who love to, you know, honor people's spaces, you know, honor people's boundaries, and they really just truly really want to be a better human being for not only for the people in their own lives, also that are connected to them, but also in their environment too. I just want to give a big kudos to the men who are doing that, especially to my brothers out there too, because, you know, as a black man too, especially with me too, being interested in Tantra and yoga, essential oils, and Oracle cards, tail cards, all that beautiful stuff too. And it's just like, you know, for men who are willing to be a better human being and just really commit out of the norm when it comes to societal norms, I give you guys a big salute too. So, hey, you know, especially with this too, you know, cheers to all the good, uh, powerful brother, I mean, powerful men who do this too, especially the brothers too. You know, I am all anti bozo too, just when it comes to that. You know, shout out to my friend Nate, Nate Billing. Ask Nathaniel, you know, the billionaire, billionaire mindset too. <laughs> Sorry to butcher your name, man, but I just want to give you a big kudos to you too, man, because you really helped me as a man to be a better person. And, you know, hey, continue to do what you do, brother. So, especially to the men who are involved in this too, who honor women's boundaries, who honor other people's boundaries without having to abuse their power. And really just being a better human being too for, you know, in their own communities and societies also. A big shout out to you guys also. And same goes to myself too. I'm gonna to salute myself. So hopefully I'm doing that way too. So if you guys wanna help me accountable or just you know as well, feel free to do so. So cheers. And we're almost done with this video. So man, it's a pretty man, long. Has to have a big hard dick. <laughs> oh, pause. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good point. Oh shit. You need to look a certain right. way, and you Shout should be to you strong. Boy, don't cry. Shake it out. And that's beautiful too. Like, there's nothing wrong to cry as a man because I just said this many times and time again, time and time again um, in my live streams. You probably could look it up too if you guys are new to my channel when it comes to, you know, there's nothing wrong with men crying too. And it's just like, um, I mean, sometimes I have my moments where I by myself and I miss my mom every day. I mean, it's just like, you know, with her unexpected passing, it's just like I was so close to her just when it comes to helping her out, when it comes to, you know, with her, you know, with her, with, you know, taking care of the house and groceries and with the family too. I really did my best just to help her out too. And, you know, probably for the, my family who's watching this too, if they are, I <laughs> mean, shout out to them. It's just like, um, it's just like they understand how, you know, even my friends too who have met my mom too it's just like you know they noticed like how close i was too with her and 
you know, I still miss her till this day. And, you know, I feel like she's always there with me just for me to be a better person too. And it's kind of like this, she's kind of an inspiration for me to just make this reaction video too. So, yeah, you know, shout out to my mom. I miss you. And, you know, I know one day I will see you again, you know, um, someday too. So anyways, let's get back into it too. And what he said too is really important too, because you don't really need to have a hard, you know, dick or, you know, to look a certain way too. And just really embracing who you are as a man too, and really putting your own spin to it as well is really important. But it's also good if you want to have disagreements, you know, when it comes to certain topics, with semen retention and with, you know, masturbation or sexuality in general too. It's really good to do that, having disagreements and agreements without having to just say, you know, put other pe others down too. So yeah, I'm going to continue to roll this video. Let's do this. I think something like this is really amazing and I've never seen anything like it being done before. They've been taught to not cry. They've been taught that they have to be super masculine. So I really respect all the men that have come here and are trying to work on themselves. I think there's a lot to learn about men being able to share openly how they felt about things. Yeah, kudos to that. Cheers. Alongside his men's businesses, Stefo does one-on-one -on -one breath work designed to clear trauma from the body. Hello, how are you? <sighs> Good, thank you. He thinks that this could help me with my own experiences. The goal of this session is to just to let go to whatever comes up. You could say it's a healing session because uh, the breath work we will be doing is a circular breathing has been used as an alternative kind of therapy for a very long time. On the emotional side, since we work with the subconscious, there might be stuff stored there that you haven't kind of looked at for a while, and there might be any types of emotions, like sadness coming up out of nowhere, you don't even know why, or anger, the breath is deeper than usual, the breath is faster than usual. I just don't feel very well. I feel like I'm really sick. You're doing great. I'm just really sick. I don't know why I feel so dizzy. Surrender to that. It's just the body releasing. Sorry, I was hoping not to have that. No, it's okay. No, don't. It's totally fine. Just let it come. You're doing exactly as you should. Oh, no. Oh, Why well, be careful, dude? Just ask him for consent. Just leave her alone. Just gotta leave her alone, man. Yeah, it's more difficult when the, the cameras are here. Mm -hmm. I was kind of expecting to just breathe and not have a reaction, but something happened, and as soon as I started talking, I could tell that I was wanting to cry my body was wanting to cry and I don't know if that's because I've just been put in a bit of a pressure cooker this week or because emotions from what I've been through are coming up or because I was essentially hyperventilating the thing is we have been going to class after class after class after class and that seems to be the way here there's so much to choose from and everybody seems to be working on themselves but when do you stop just preparing for a little cacao ceremony, Maybe. girl cacao ceremony. Oh. You can think about an intention for this ceremony, what we call. Do you think it's possible to heal? <laughs> heal fully, you mean? Yeah. Probably not. It's quite a lifelong process to be looking at where can I go from healing to reviewing to pleasure to bliss. And That's a good point. Yeah. So if you guys disagree with what she's saying too, you know, feel free to comment. But yeah, that's a good point there. And I had a normal job. I was the executive director of a chamber of commerce. Wow. And I handed in my resignation and I lived at the Osho Meditation Resort in Kuna. Yeah, and looked at Osho Meditations. Oh, wow. That was where I became Satyama. Yeah. It's that Osho you might have seen in Netflix. Yeah, that Park guy's Park, controversial. Which documented the Osho. sexual abuse rampant in his Sheesh. He is also, incidentally, the creator of Neo Tantra, with many practitioners still pilgrimaging to Osho centers for their teaching. There's obviously a massive 
I'm told to say about him. For sure, if you haven't lived there. But this is all media. <laughs> I have the time of my life there. So did you really experience that? Controversy. Yeah. With a show. Was he, he wasn't now? alive. Oh, he wasn't okay. alive at the time. Right. So what was your name before? Don't ask me that, I'm not going to ask you. Please. <laughs> I would love to know. Did your original name begin with S? <laughs> I didn't. Was it Susan? No. <laughs> so what's your intention? I would like to be a powerful, accomplished woman. I can help you with that. In the last 10 years, I've lived in many different conscious communities. My workshop could even be considered slightly controversial. I will put you in situations that would maybe make you feel uncomfortable, like a transfiguration ceremony, which we're going to do under the full moon. You will go to different Shiva's experience, energies, different men. Yes. Hmm. So I've just got a message of Satyama, and it says, assignment, invite a man to tomorrow's transfiguration ritual. Maybe I can just invite Idol or something. I think we had a moment on the beach where we both saw blue and white and we were staring into each other's souls. Did you see white, blue? Satyama has asked me to bring someone to the transfiguration ceremony tonight. You seem like quite a nice guy. <laughs> Will you come with me? Um, actually... Uh, Don't say... <laughs> the rejection! <laughs> actually, I have some dance, so... Uh, it's not going to be possible to dance. Oh, banger. Shall I just jump in the sea? Satyama said not to worry, though, as she found a sexy British man for me. Terrified. This is it. It's the culmination of all the tantric work that I've done this week. Da, 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 da. I feel a little bit like it's my wedding day and I have no idea what to expect. Apart from the fact I'm going to be paired up with an English man called Ross. Rory, can you just get on here? It feels a little bit like a tantric speed dating. <laughs> That's a good point. Hello. Oh, you're Rob. Nice to meet you. Tim. Tim. Yeah. Okay. How are you? Very good. Yes. Shall we? I would love it if the men would stand up, have a look at whoever the men are here, walk and have a look to see all the women that are here participating also. Now that we are all paired with our Shivas, all men, it's time for the moonlight ceremony to begin. The men are sent to the beach to await our shaktis, or women, to gracefully descend to them. Wait up, guys! Yeah, hold up. Don't ditch her. I know, I feel you, Tear. Hold up. <laughs> the ritual is of a divine state beyond the mind. You are representing femininity, and he will be the one that will be holding consciousness for us in this ritual. What the hell? That's a nice sound though, not gonna lie. In this sacred ceremony, I must dance around the different men in the group, hold a mudra or spiritual gesture, before sitting down for some more eye gazing. For a ritual which should profoundly express my femininity, it looks a lot like a group of women dancing for men's pleasure. Mm. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Namaste. You know, <clears throat> I understand where tears come from, because when it comes to these kind of ceremonies too. And it's just like, you know, um, I don't want to comment on it too much, but when it comes to, you know, you know, like when it comes to the ceremonies, you have to really, I mean, I'm just saying this too. I mean, if someone like, you know, is trying to, you know, dance for my own pleasure too, they don't really have to do that. It's just like, you know, let them be themselves too, just like when it comes to, you know, how they want to express themselves freely too. So if like when it comes to that, I totally understand where tears coming from. 
it's kind of like you know dancing for someone's you know attention or approval like, i could mean that could really just be you know i you know, i don't know if it could be messy um but i mean it could be i don't know but when it comes to that i mean all i can say is too it's just like you know if that they really truly wants you from a consensual and healthy place i mean okay that's me if someone if they like someone too that's another that's a different thing but just like you know i don't know maybe i'm talking out of the side of my neck too so but i, I just want to say i understand where tears is coming from with that so yeah anyways let me get back to it i find another woman from the ritual also needing some time out yo those lights are wicked what the hell yeah, it's, 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 you're like so many different people. You're like looking into straight into soul. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that intense. Yeah. I don't know. Is there something in me that's like since you've only been here so many times, you've got to be wary of like the sexual predators. Like it feels so unnatural for me today. Mm -hmm. Island, people can go to extreme lengths on their journey of discovery. But I'm not sure I'm there yet. If I had said to myself that I would be doing something like this maybe a year ago, I would have said, no, absolutely not. That's not really, I can't see myself doing that. It's not my kind of thing. But recently, I think circumstances have made me push towards seeing if I can change or what sort of more radical approaches there are to healing for me. What do you want to get healed from? Mm -hmm. Um, I can't go, I, I don't want to specifically now in this setting go into the stuff that happened to me. Before I started this whole journey, I didn't have this fire inside of me and I was very afraid of my sexuality and very afraid of sex in general. And then I went to my first sexual shamanic awakening and to be honest i i didn't think it would shift me so much but it changed my whole life what happened there what happened there <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that from the minute that i walked in it was crazy only when you really allow yourself to die that's when rebirth is coming only only it's like pain so many people feel pain and then they they stop because they don't want to feel more pain. Mm. I find it hard to feel pain. Yeah. How long are you feeling pain for? It hurts, but for, you know, a very short amount of time. And then I'm like, I need to be strong about this. It's been what I've done since I was a teenager. The first person I had sex with is very, very traumatic to me. And I've definitely not processed it. Yeah. And how do you feel about meeting that? I want to yeah. and it's there and I can talk about it kind of but I I am um, yeah I'm just struggling with stuff. maybe I'm dealing with it a bit now yeah because the boxes are beginning to open whether you like it or not <laughs> thank you <laughs> I feel like that talk with Natalie was actually one of the most poignant parts of my journey so far. I did feel like it was almost a sort of little therapy session in a way. So I guess the point is, a lot of people heal in different ways. Mm -hmm. For me, sitting having a chat with a coconut was the perfect way of doing it. Yay. But for now, That's awesome to hear. And it's just like, you know, how people heal and just really, you know, let people heal in their own way too and have the freedom for people to do that whether they're a woman or if they're a man especially how they identify themselves too that's beautiful that Tyr has found that for herself too and, and it's just more power to her too and to anyone mm -hmm. who's doing that also in their own way too just to really heal in their own way too because it doesn't have to be with tantra also it can be with other practices too martial arts yoga even with it comes to just you know how you guys want to heal to and just really doing that in your own way and really putting your own spin to it from a healthy place you know sounds powerful yeah shout out to tear absolutely 
hopefully something more extreme, something that was going to push her limits, is how she healed. Hmm. If you are hiding, you cannot create intimacy. Intimacy begins with vulnerability. This is an island of contradictions. Oh shit, it's cops are in here? Is that 12? Know your boundaries Five and challenge them. Claim and display Sorry. your sexuality. Yeah. But don't confuse this with sensuality, which is wholly separate. Celebrate your femininity, but also deify men. Escape from trauma, but potentially be traumatized all over again. Tantra has undoubtedly done a lot of good for a right, lot of right, people. Right, right. I didn't have any sense of sexuality. Oh, she's. I'm just going to say this too. And this is respectfully saying this too. I think Lena is awesome. She's probably one. Her and my friend, you know. I think I was just, you know, my friend that I mentioned earlier too, you know, the gorgeous redhead too, you know. I think her name is Heather. I'm just say that too. I think they're really cool too. And everyone involved too, is, you know, shout out to them. But, you know, Lena, she's really cool too. There's some energy about it too. She's really cool. So I could be totally wrong about it too. I, mean, I don't know her personally, but from what I've seen too from this episode, she seems really down to earth and singles to Heather also and Tear as well. So shout out to all three of them, especially everyone in this video too. So. This island. I didn't have a pleasure practice. My sexuality was like, there was nothing, but this Wild West-like industry with no regulations and charlatans a dime a dozen mm -hmm. can be fertile ground for abuse. Yeah. What would your really? advice be to women who are joining this community? Anywhere in your body, if you're feeling that this is like not right, it's not right. Yo, Lena, cheers. That's exactly when I was, took the words out of my mouth. Shit. Hold up. Let me re, let's rewind that shit. Hold up. Hold up. If you're feeling this is not right, it's not right. Right. She's right. That's hundred percent facts right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cheers. She's right. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to London, sure of a few things. I definitely still have some shit to work through, and conversation is a great help. I know I could never be a stripper, and from now on, hugs are only allowed to be three seconds maximum. There you go. But for those still there. I truly hope they're able to create a second. Shout out to my friend Heather. It's in the, I think she's wearing the pink kind of, I think yoga pants? Or, I don't know, she's really cool. It's down there, so shout out to her. I was going to say that too. Safe healing community in the paradise of Tantra Island. Oh, shit. Close your eyes again. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> so I think I kind of start over again too. So this was a long reaction video too, especially when it comes to just with this, you know, reaction video too. I know it was probably long too. So if you guys had to watch this, break it down into parts two, I totally understand it also. So, um, you know, for anyone who's just, you know, how you guys feel about this reaction video to when it comes to this episode of With Fringes, episode two, you know, when it comes to from Vice also, especially when it comes to Dear Tear uh Laundry too. She really did a really amazing job just when it comes to this episode. And everyone involved in this too did their did a really good job too, just explaining it when it comes to their experiences, when it comes to Tantra and, you know, their practices and so on and so forth too so oh shit yeah even just like how i feel about it too it's just like you know i think i mean it's just like how you know in the end too how people heal too is really should really should really you know um really find that in their own way too when it comes to this because you know tantra not is not for everyone too and it you know if it doesn't feel right to you it doesn't feel right and just really honoring that too like lena said too in this uh video also and so when it comes to that as well i mean just i just that's how i actually honestly feel about you know any kind of practice just really if it doesn't feel right to you just really honoring that too especially when it comes to you know 
um, as well too. And especially when it comes to, I shared about the code of conduct, when it comes to these practices too, I believe that there should be something in place. So when it comes to someone who, I mean, people who have a certification or a license too, there should be a code of conduct there too, or if there is too, like certifications or licenses for people to practice Tantra too, in certain ways. So you guys are more than welcome to edu you know, post your links in the comment section below too. And uh, yeah, so yeah, get, yeah, guys, feel free to you know share your feelings and thoughts about this reaction video. How I reacted to this too. I know there's some moments where I acted a goofball and all that, but I really did that from a respectable place too. So when it comes to that also, and yeah, I'll definitely shout out to Vice and shout out to Tier Dandi and everyone involved in this video too. If you guys want to see the original video also, I'll link the I'll post a link to it in the description below. I'll link uh Tier Dandri's Instagram also so you guys can really check her out also. And yeah, much love to all you guys too who are just who took the whole time to just watch this whole long ass <laughs> reaction video too. I mean you know, much love to you guys also, especially in my audience too. If you guys want to share this video with your friends and your family, if you guys want to give this like uh, video a like and share with your family, I mean, subscribing to, you know, um, my YouTube channel also, if you're watching that on that platform too, feel free to do so. And may we continue to practice self-care that can benefit us, our loved ones, and our whole environment. So anyways, I'm going to, you know, Take a little breather and I'm going to, you know, enjoy my rest of the day. So peace and much love. I'm saying.